right. So this is going to be a bit of a confusing video, right? And uh, I know to a lot of people, this stuff won't make sense. But I've recently discovered that the best thing I could do for my freelance career would be to get a job. Now, let's talk about um, 2020 this year, what's been going on and what's been happening. Um, I had an internship earlier this year from about January to June or July. Sorry, my memory's bad. I really don't remember. And um, I learned a lot. I learned so much <laughs> that for a second, I thought that what I actually wanted to do was get into freelance web development and uh, basically make things for other people. Now, there's a couple of issues with that plan because that means that, one, I have, I'd have i have to double down on my design skills, which takes me pretty far away from a web development. They're different disciplines, and even though all of it comes together to make this nice little thing, in real life, designers, developers, uh, research, most of those things, you know, product development, most of those things are all different jobs, right? So, obviously, I can't put myself in a situation where I need to be doing you know, four jobs on top of accounting for myself, on top of writing pitches and proposals, on top of doing the actual work. Um, another thing that has stuck out to me a lot this year that I realized that I've kind of ignored and uh, undervalued is that devs, you know, actual developers seem to like talking to me. And um, this became kind of like a conflict, right? Because I have like this great connection with my peers, but my peers ultimately aren't the people that are my customers. And um, as far as freelance web development, could I do it? Yes. Um, would I be good at it? Yes. Um, I've already kind of like established those things. I even still get referrals here and there. But I think that uh, my calling is a bit different than the calling that I've imagined or cooked up for myself. Right. So um, some of the things that stick out to me is uh, my part time job, for example, my part time job. I literally help code and boot camp students fix problems with their code. So in a way, um, I'm teaching and I actually started that job just on a whim because honestly, I needed the extra money. And um, it turned into something totally different than what anyone could have anticipated. Uh, basically, I ended up liking the job. And not only did I end up liking the job, I actually ended up being pretty good at the job. And um, that job uh, actually pushes me to, you know, really brush up on the fundamentals of what I'm talking about, whether we're talking about React, Handlebars, uh, Heroku, Netlify, you know, whether we're talking like development, deployment, design, um, or, or any of the technical things involved in between those things. And um, I basically realized that, you know, my target audience should really be aspiring developers, self-taught developers, boot current graduates, people that are like me, that I know how to help and speak to. But by far, the biggest thing that that group needs help with is how to get that first job. And um, <laughs> I realized that I, I, I've taken a lot from the dev community, from the meetup community, from all these organizations that have helped me out. And, uh, and I've given back very little. So long story short, um, I'll just be making another pivot. It feels like this year has been a year of, you know, getting a taste of something, you know, and being like, hmm. It tastes good. And then a couple weeks or a couple months in, I kind of realized like, mm, this isn't scratching the itch that I originally thought it was. Or, you know, I've been brought into a situation to basically be a fixer, right? You know, fixers make things happen. Um, developers are a lot more methodical than that. And I've learned that, you know, the more that I learn about computer science fundamentals, like solid principles, for example, um, I can't allow myself to get into these situations where I'm not allowed or I don't have the room to be methodical, think things through, think my approaches through. Uh, it just it just doesn't work. It's, it's at odds with, with who I am now. I'm just a different person since I've learned how to code. And... Um, 
I like talking to developers. <laughs> like, honestly, you know, I have uh, freelance clients that are coming in, but I'm finding that I'm attracting people from all across the board. You know, I'm attracting nonprofits. I'm attracting family members. I'm attracting people that have put money into already getting their MVPs developed. And um, it's going to take me time to figure out how to help those people. But in the meantime, you know, I've learned tons of things about what not to do on the job hunt. Tons of things about, you know, how to actually go out and find personal projects that will move the needle in your career. Um, all of these things are, are more beneficial, in my opinion, to the aspiring developer, the self-taught developer, the boot camp graduate than they are to, you know, these potential uh, clients that are coming to me. So um, I hope this video makes sense. The The real reason I'm recording this video is because, you know, figuring out what you want to do when you decide that you want to be like an entrepreneur or start your own freelance business is pretty hard. And um, eventually we'll talk more about that too. But I think right now... Um, I would, I, would, I would caution anyone that thinks they want to jump into freelance work or thinks they want to just go out and start their own business or thinks that some course is going to, you know, be the magic ticket to help them start their own business or anything of that nature. And I would also um, caution people of starting businesses broke. You know, uh, I, I just did it <laughs> and <laughs> everything was perfect, except I ran out of money. And that's never... Um, a good thing in business when you're first getting started you have to pour money into the business you have to pour time into the business and um i, I honestly just think with the support system that i have you know I, I i think i could honestly go out into the world and i could sell myself as a you know full stack web developer that is a serial entrepreneur on the side you know i like i, I i've picked up these pro bono projects that i do like impact nigeria um, now justice for Georgia. Um, and I'll be making another video about the difference between free work and pro bono projects, but long story short, um, I found some projects that I can use where, you know, I have room to fail. I have room to experiment. And, um, I think, you know, that's an important, <laughs> that's a very, very important, uh, side of, our careers, right? Our careers can't be all work and no play. And our careers can't be all work without, you know, these opportunities to explore other sides of yourself and explore these things that you just don't get to do at work, right? Like at work, you don't get to fail. But with Impact Nigeria, I can work on a full stack application that for the most part, you know, I'm the only person working on. And I can make these mistakes um, or I can take things from work and, you know, hone down on those 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 things that I'm I'm screwing up at work and come back to Impact Nigeria and say like okay these are the mistakes and the problems that I'm seeing for you know a big code base so let's you know experiment and learn these things and um, I think if anything this year I've done an excellent job at finding pro bono projects that really resonate with me that I could continue doing that aren't in conflict with any potential job that I would ever have. And most importantly, um, I can use these projects as these kind of content pillars or these kind of fountains of content to help other developers um, find ways to get ahead in the job hunt, right? And uh, that is pretty much what I want to do. That's what I've committed to doing. I truly do feel like um, that's where my need is right now. Um, and... I just think it makes sense. I think it'll all make a lot more sense. Um, you know how all these things will work together. If it doesn't, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm, I'm th this video is just me publicly documenting. It's like, yes, I figured out the strategy for my, my own freelance business and to build the expertise and the credibility that I'll need in order for my freelance business to be successful. That requires me going out into the real world, dealing with real uh, world production problems and, you know, tackling these issues that make us better developers. And certainly I could find other ways to do that. But I think I've pushed myself as far as I can go all alone.
and uh, we're 10 minutes in. I know this video is all over the place. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, that's the direction that we're going in. Um, of course, I still talk about stuff like CBD. I still, you know, talk about whatever I want. Still give everyone a behind the scene uh, view of what I'm doing day to day. But uh, it's time for me to uh, work my way back on home and uh, go and get the job that I always knew that I could get. But for whatever reason, I never seemed to believe in myself enough or I never stuck it out long enough um, to see it through. So uh, let's go out there. Let's conquer those fears. And um, my new motto going forward will be ask more questions. So. Uh, I'm going to help everyone ask more questions of themselves or their prospective employers. And uh, we're all going to figure this stuff out together. So stay tuned. And uh, if you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. I'm Adrian Todd Ross of Adrian Ross Consulting, LLC. But sooner than later, I'll be employed somewhere working full time at a company and continuously giving you all the scoop on what not to do and what to do, whether you have an internship or a full-time job. Let's get there. Peace.